Hello, in this video, I'd like to take a minute to talk about the statistical process. So in this section, we've got some objectives. Um, first, what we'll do is distinguish between a couple of definitions of statistics. Through real world scenarios, recognize and identify which steps the statistical process um, is being described. And then also through real world scenarios, we'll talk a minute about what a sample is, what a population is, and also what we would consider a case. All right, so these definitions of statistics. Um, so in order to understand why you need to take statistics, you need to understand exactly what it is. So we'll take a minute to talk about that. Um, first and foremost, you might have heard, you know, um, you might have heard a statistic or heard things about a statistic and what that actually is, a statistic, it's a number that describes a characteristic of a sample. Now, um, we'll revisit some of these definitions in a little while, but a population is a, a group of individuals or cases that I want to make some type of generalization about. Often I want to know, I don't know, maybe what is the average height of Oregon State students or something like that. Well, um, for reasons we'll discuss a bit later on, um, it's, uh, it's pretty much impossible to actually you know, gather information on a population. So what we have to do is take a subset of that population. This is what we call a sample. So a characteristic of a sample might be something like the sample mean. This is a statistic. Um, I can also measure some other things about the sample, maybe the minimum value, the maximum value, um, you know, what's the range. Those are also statistics because they describe a characteristic of the sample. Now, statistics with the capital S, that is the science of collecting, organizing, describing, and interpreting data. So, so statistics, gosh, we we do a lot. We focus on how to collect data properly. Once we have it, how to organize it. We'll talk about ways of actually describing the data. Um, so what graphs could you use? What statistics would you use to describe what you see? And then also we'll learn techniques on how to actually interpret that data. That's a really important piece that comes uh, towards the end of any introductory stats course. All right, so the steps in the statistical process really start with, you know, forming the research question. That's one of the most important things that we've got to do. Establish a question of interest. So, you know, you're sitting down, you're curious about something. We really need to think about how are we going to form that question in such a way that we can collect data in order to answer that question, because really that's going to be the, the ultimate goal. So in step two, we need to design a proper study to answer that question of interest. So if my question of interest is, you know, related to some type of causal effect, does X cause changes in Y? Well, then I'll need to be able to design a proper study or uh, an experiment in order to make that kind of causal conclusion that I want to. Uh, so designing a proper study involves two different things, which is one, sampling, and study design. So those are the two, you know, things that we need to think about. How are you going to get those cases from the population in the first place? And then once you have them, what are you going to do with them? All right, now the next step would be to collect the data, right? You've got your question, you've got your plan. Now go and execute the plan and record the data, trying to make as few mistakes as possible. Really be um, watchful of how the data is recorded. Are your measuring devices, you know, um, accurate, those sorts of things you need to certainly consider. So once you have the data, step four, well, look at it. Explore the data through summary information and graphical displays. So you calculate statistics uh, from your the information you have, and you might want to also, you know, take a look at it. So graphical displays like histograms or box plots or even bar charts are all options based on what kind of data you have um, in front of you. All right, so once you, you know, looked at the data, you might be able to kind of take a guess as 
to what the answer um, to your original question might be. But in step five, we'll actually perform, you know, a formal statistical analyses. So we might calculate a confidence interval, or we might conduct a hypothesis test, which will then eventually be able uh, will, will allow us to make a conclusion. So we'll be able to answer that original research question that we started with at the very beginning of this whole process. All right, so here's an example. Do you like to hike? Right, who doesn't really? Um, hiking's wonderful. It's a nice way to sort of relax, get out of the house. Well, have you ever gotten lost? Thankfully, I have never gotten lost, um, but that would be such a scary feeling. I couldn't even imagine. Well, let's suppose that you get lost on a in a forest, foggy day. You can't really tell where you're going. Um, so as you wander through the forest, do you think you might tend to drift in one direction or do you think you could really follow a straight line, right? Could you, could you follow, you know, north and stay north or are you going to kind of veer off track a little bit? Well, this is a really good question. And in fact, a high school student investigated this exact same sort of a situation. Um, so the purpose of her study was to demonstrate that human um, uh, humans tend to not really walk in a straight line when they can't tell where they're, what their surroundings are. Um, she wanted to kind of see if this was true. So in designing the study, what she decided to do was collect information on um, high school students that she went to school with. 32 subjects total were randomly selected from the student's high school. Each person was tested individually, and the tests were performed on a high school football field. So what she did to try and mimic this um, situation of not being able to really see where you're going, each person stood on the um, goal line uh, halfway between, between the sidelines. So they stood right here, kind of dead center in the football field, on one end of the football field. Then they told, were told to walk to the other goal posts. Um, so what was, you know, the goal would be to walk all the way straight. Um, but th what they wanted to see is if people tended to sort of veer off to one side or the other. And so a lot of information was collected. Whether or not the student crossed the sidelines, the number of yards that they went until they crossed the sidelines, if they did, which sidelines they actually crossed, was it left or right? Also measured what dominant hand, uh, what was their dominant hand, how tall they were, as well as their gender. And so the results of the study, all of those people that were in the study eventually crossed the sidelines. Nobody made it to the other end of the football field. All but one crossed the sideline corresponding to their dominant hand. Um, so that was kind of interesting. So if you're right-handed, chances are you're going to cross the right sideline. There was a strong correlation between a person's height and how far they walked before crossing the sideline. Um, and males tended to walk further before crossing the sideline um, on average than females. Well, knowing that males tend to be taller than females, I'm guessing I can interpret this bullet by saying the taller a person is, probably the further they were able to walk. Um, and certainly there might be something to do with gender as far as that goes. So this was all of the information that they found. So to kind of go back to our statistical process, you know, her population really were, you know, all students at her high school. She collected a sample of 32 state students. And in this example, students were the cases or those individuals. Um, she had a research question and then she designed a study in order to answer some of these research questions. It sounded like maybe she even had more than one. So she had a question she wanted to answer. She needed data and made a plan on how to get it. Right? She collected data uh, and organized that data and then described and interpreted what she found. So with this being said, why is statistics important? Well, it allows us to make an accurate conclusion about a population based on the results of sample data, as long as the sample was collected properly. Now, this is pretty great because earlier on I said, you know, we don't really have the resources uh, to collect information on the population. 
right? That's one of the reasons why the U.S. Census only happens every 10 years, right? So time consuming and so expensive. Well, with the techniques that you're going to learn in an introductory stats course, we'll be able to actually make conclusions about this larger population based on just collecting data on a smaller sample, right? And uh, the main key there, though, is that we have to design a study properly and we have to collect a sample so that it represents that population of interest. All right, well, thanks for listening and uh, I'll see you in the next video.